Hey guys, how's it going? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel. And for today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys really quick about a little piece of media that you may have heard of known as the World of Ruby, the official companion. So first and foremost, I definitely want to give a big shout out and a humble thank you to the guys and gals over at Viz who reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and extended me an early copy of the companion that I've been looking over and reading through over the last couple of weeks. Some of you guys who are following me on Twitter might have seen a bit of the things that I've teased, some of the concept arts for specific characters in their volume seven outfits, uh, but for the most part, getting really hyped and excited for this to be released to the public uh, for all degrees of Ruby fans, whether you're a casual viewer or whether you're more of a hardcore veteran like myself. And this companion is actually a really cool outline of both the lore, uh, things that we know, little bits and nuggets of information that we don't know, and kind of the overall package and journey of where the series started back in 2012, 2013, to where we are now going into volume seven. So, so there's a lot of things that I wanna get through and address and showcase and share to you guys. For any of you guys who are interested in picking this up, uh, by the time this video goes up on my channel, it should be available to the general public. So I will leave a link in the description where you can pick up a copy for yourself over on the Viz website. Um, and most likely Rooster Teeth will probably have these available in the Rooster Teeth online store by the time the release date comes around. So I'll be sure to leave that in the comment section for you as well. Uh, but there's a lot to look forward to. So I'm gonna get through uh, a few snippets here giving you guys a little taste test of what you guys can look forward to and expect for the overall package of the companion book yourself um and as always thank you guys for the support leave your thoughts in the comments once again shout out and thank you to viz for this opportunity and uh i hope you guys enjoy so let's check this out officially announced at rtx austin 2019 the world of ruby the official companion is a 200 page hardcover book written by daniel wallace containing exclusive commentaries beautiful artwork along with all of the canonical information on the ruby series across the first six volumes now when i first heard about this book i immediately thought holy crap we're getting a lore book we're getting a book that's going to expand on the universe of ruby and add so much more to the series beyond what we've already gotten and to that i'll say it's a little complicated because while yes there are some fresh nuggets of information given here and there the book doesn't nearly focus as much on the expansion of the ruby universe as much as it focuses on the real world journey of how the series developed from a proof of concept to the flagship series it is today. I actually think the strongest point of the companion is how well it lays out the genetic makeup and DNA of how the show started. It documents and calls on the memories of so many people in order to paint a very ambitious and nostalgic picture of Ruby's humble beginning. So while the companion may fall short for some in the direction of world building, it does a great job at not only reinforcing the already established lore, so that way it's kind of more of a definitive stance on everything that we've known so far, but it also reminds me personally where I was during the show's creation and why I fell in love with the series and Rooster Teeth in the first place. So the companion is comprised of five parts as well as a forward by Rooster Teeth at the time CEO Matt Hollum. So I would say this first part is split into two parts. On one end, you have the heart and soul of Ruby's origins. Everything from Rooster Teeth's success and popularity and growth off of Red vs. Blue, which paved the way for Ruby's creation, to Monty's creative drive and focus of wanting to make a show everything from the character trailers to the color schemes to the point where he even had his friends like Lindsay, Kara, Aaron, and Barbara be transcended and have a lot of their personality quirks incorporated to the characters that they portray in the show. And on the other end, you have bringing this world to life with governing rules. So everything you'll find in here from dust, kingdoms, aura, the environment, the color rule, grim, and semblances, uh, everything is kind of built up here to give you an understanding of a world that is slowly being able to come to life with all of the governing bodies that make it feel like a realistic setting. Part two is dedicated to characters, and this is probably the most satisfying part of the companion for most, considering it takes up a vast majority of the book. And with 70 plus characters, you can only imagine that there will in fact be varying degrees of information you'll get from a main character like Yang to more side characters who haven't had much of the limelight like Sage or Scarlet. Actually, you know what? Never mind. They gave Zwei his own section of this book. All is forgiven. But in all seriousness, uh, this part is mainly focused on giving key analysis to most of the main cast while giving us nuggets and snippets and things here and there about characters who we may have seen but we'll probably see more of as the show progresses one thing that i'm really happy that they brought back that they really used to do a lot in the earlier volumes was give a name to damn near every weapon in the show some of my favorites being ironwood's pistol is called due process which is really clever while neptune's weapon is called try hard which is really funny because he tries so hard to be cool all the time unfortunately one thing about the character 
character section is that it's a painful reminder that most of the side characters in this show are unflushed and one thing that i really wish that they had done was if there are characters who are meant to only ever be side characters i would have really liked if they gave us a little bit more information as to why those characters became huntresses or huntsmen or you know just little bits of nuggets of information instead of simply this is what the character's description is this is what they look like this is what they're based off of and this is what their weapon looks like obviously the main cast got most of the acknowledgement while a lot of the side characters who are fan favorites were left hung to dry until they make more of an appearance in the show another cool thing that you can look forward to in the book is that every character also has a, a definitive aspect of what their semblance is for example ruby's semblance is speed but it's called pedal burst which is basically a speed semblance with the aesthetic of rose petals and quick little side note here i love the fact that ren's semblance is called tranquility because it makes it all the more satisfying to know that i uploaded a video a couple years ago when his semblance was first revealed and i was kind of on the money with that Play of the game. Now, my two personal favorite moments of the character section is Team Stark tease that Rooster Teeth left us with. I am so excited for when we eventually get a Team Stark flashback. They didn't give us too much information, but they gave us enough information to infer that it's not a matter of if we'll get a Team Stark flashback or a Team Stark sequence or moment or whatever but a matter of when. So I'm really excited about that. And you also learn a shit ton about Neo as a character, everything from her concept as an ice cream themed, gender bent version of Roman Torchwick to the fact that it's revealed who her voice actress was gonna be. Sarah Silverman of all people. And ultimately, I personally feel like it's a good thing that that didn't fall through because Neo eventually went on to become one of the most favorite, if not the most favorite character in Ruby based on the fact that she doesn't really speak a lot she lets a lot of her actions do the talking and so there are some nuggets of information here and there on the level of neos that i feel a lot of people are going to enjoy part three was titled grim and there's really not much to say there are of course mentions of the inspirations of some grim like the nevermore is a reference of the 1845 poem by edgar Allan poe while the apathy is based on herman melville's bartleby the scrivener and we get the idea that they are the personification of destruction in the shape of recognizable beasts but other than that i i think the grim mainly excel in the show mainly for their initial reveal and how they're built up to be Salem's unstoppable force of evil but there really wasn't much to add other than slight descriptions on the grim designs and what some of them are referenced and based off of in the real world part four is titled ready for battle and this part really highlights the bread and butter of the show overall which has always been its action and a big part of that comes down to the lead animators the directors and everything that kind of comes together from the meticulous and lethal execution that that was originated and created and started all off by Monty Ohm. Now, obviously it's important to highlight and emphasize that of course things are very different without him, but this part really emphasizes and shows, uses Monty as a template and uses everything that has come together for the show to follow up on when action scenes are big and bombastic and exciting. And they actually highlight quite a few iconic battles from the show, everything from volume one, chapter eight, which I would say was the first real proving point of the potential that Ruby could go on. You know, the fight between the Deathstalker and the Nevermore. Another great fight that they showcase, that's one of my all time favorites, especially during the early days of Ruby, was the fight between Team Ruby and the mech with Torchwick during volume two. I think that fight has a lot of levels and layers of teamwork and the potential that Ruby your teeth is speaking of when they're talking about iconic fights and team oriented fighting they also showcase some moments here and there between one-on-one -on -one matches such as Tyrion versus crow as well as cinder versus raven from volume 5 and i would say that this part of the companion definitely showcases a lot of what goes into creating an intense fight sequence from the lead animator's perspective to what's addressed and put onto the screen in terms of like early concept of a fight which they have screenshots for those which is really cool and so i i really like how they give a, a big point and show Showing off the bread and butter of the show in this sequence and then wrapping up overall uh, the final part is essentially uh expanding horizons which is really telling of everything that ruby has done for rooster teeth as a company and the overall support of the fans it does a lot in showcasing and kind of advertising almost all of the other subsets of ruby genres in terms of merchandise such as ruby chibi some of the video game spin-offs that they've created the manga volume 7 of course and the fact that one of rooster teeth's first properties has a conclusive 
conclusive definitive ending in that while we're on this journey and while we're all getting really hyped and excited and creating memories and having moments to share with everybody else online the inevitable day will arrive where the series does have a final conclusion so until that time comes obviously all of us can look forward to you know everything else that's going to be built up and provided for years to come until that day and at the very end they gave a very nice thank you to the fan and a, a sneak peek of the full concept of team ruby in their volume 7 outfits which like i said i posted on twitter a little too soon just because i was hyped and excited and i gave a little shout out to cosplayers and fan artists who wanted to check that out before the book release but i would highly encourage anyone who's a ruby fan whether you're a casual viewer or a hardcore fan uh, to pick this up check it out for yourself there's a lot more in this book that's provided that i didn't go over this was kind of like a quick skimmed overview but overall i enjoyed the book i thought it was a really great take on on the last six years of this show that i've grown to fall in love with to make content on for my channel and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and in a nutshell that is everything that is my overview of the world of ruby the official companion and like i said whatever degree of a fan you are whether it's a casual viewer or a hardcore veteran like myself i feel like this is a must-have for ruby fans in in general especially if there are things that you kind of want to see be definitively explained um, over the course of the last six volumes having something tangible something real something that's official and approved by rooster teeth themselves is great and uh, you know ultimately i think this is a really cool benchmark as well for what we can get for the future like if they end up doing another one for volume say 7 to 12 if the, if the universe or the series evolves and expands beyond where it is today uh like i mentioned this should be available by the time this hits on my channel this should be available for majority of people over on viz's website hopefully the rooster teeth online store has it as well i'd find it very odd if it wasn't but ultimately i'd love to know what you guys think about the book if any of you guys are planning on picking it up for yourselves if you guys have read it what do you guys think for those of you who are on the fence hopefully this is a uh, kind of like a nice video uh form to kind of see if this is something that you can pick up or if you'd like to pick it up it's about 40 dollars and ultimately thank you guys so much for the support again thank you for viz for reaching out for sending me an early copy this was super exciting uh to look forward to and put together before it kind of hit for everyone else to check it out but ultimately that's everything so again thank you guys so much for watching uh as always leave thoughts of what you guys think about the video in general if any of you guys have this copy or if those of you who are planning on picking it up for yourself i'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, until the next video, I will see you in the next one. Take care.